But women will be saved through childbirth if they continue in faith, love, holiness, and priority. Paul's intention here, I'm going quicker, is to do more with conduct, with the woman's conduct, than literally being saved through childbirth. That's good news. That's good news, because if salvation came through childbirth, how's the men supposed to get saved? I don't want to go there, ladies. I don't want to go there, men. If it meant this, then why do Christian women die in childbirth? It's not satisfactory. What is being said is that a change a woman from a domineering, usurping type woman actually into a lady who knows her place. Just as we can have men who are gentlemen as Christians, we can have women who are ladies as Christians. That makes sense. I mean, I understand that and I'm a bloke. I understand that. What he's saying is, actually, there is a role for you. Primarily in those times, it was solely in the home because there was no opportunity really for business. Lydia in the New Testament is really exceptional running her own business. Do we understand that? A seller of purple. She's an exceptional woman. And she was the first convert there in Philippi. Who do you think Paul left in charge of the church in the early days? Oh, could hear another pin drop. She's not qualified, this poor lady and these women in Timothy, because she's not educated. She doesn't know the scripture and therefore is easily deceived. Hence, Paul gives instruction that women should teach younger women and children. That's in Titus 2 verses 3 to 5. Just in case you run up to me afterwards and show me the proof text. Can I just lovingly say that a text without a context is a pretext? I'll say that again because you might want to write that down. A text without a context is a pretext. And we can prove anything. You run up to me after and say, oh, Titus 2, women should only teach children and women. Let me say why that is. Because they were educated slightly above the, chi- the level of a child or other women. Older women are told to instruct younger women because they've lived longer and heard more and developed more and learnt more so they can teach others. But let us not turn around and say we're going to relegate our women just to ministry in Sunday school. That would be appalling. So what Paul is saying here is that there is a role for a woman to grow up in Christ and become a woman of God. At the time, there was no opportunity for her to have a formal education. However, we just begin to discover that the evidence from the rest of Scripture, I'm going to move on, I'm going to do the rest of my sermon in five minutes. Are you ready? Hold on. We discover that the evidence from the rest of Scripture is phenomenally in favor of God treating women with parity as well as gender-specific roles. I haven't got time to go through them all. I've listed them here in my notes, but we can think of Deborah in Judges 4-5. to He brought Israel 20 years of peace. When there were men who could lead, it wasn't there weren't suitable men, God anointed her to lead. We may not like that, but that's the truth of it. If we skip right the way through to the New Testament, we begin to discover that there are other people that were used. Lydia, I've already mentioned... We could talk about those who finance the ministry. If we look at Mary and Martha, the sisters of uh, Lazarus. If you read there in the account in Luke, we begin to discover that Martha's in the kitchen making food and Mary sitting at Jesus' feet. And she goes, do you not understand that Mary should be in the kitchen with me? And Jesus says, she has been given something that will not be taken away from her. What's actually, the picture there is a rabbi teaching the disciples who would sit around the feet and say, what did that mean? And Mary sidles in and sits down with them. And Jesus doesn't turn around and say, in the kitchen, keep quiet, put your hat on. He didn't see that. He saw a hungry heart who wanted to learn, so fed her. And we can show examples of that throughout Scripture. Can I just quickly touch, I haven't got time to go into it all, but I hope you've enjoyed a bit of teaching this morning. Don't worry, there's a Grand Prix on today. We can all relax this afternoon. Evidence through history and today. I haven't got time to go through every single person throughout the church history through 2,000 years, but I can say there's some phenomenal women of God and phenomenal men of God who were touched by the Holy Spirit at different times and different places. But just thinking of the Pentecostal movement Globally, we can think of people like Sister Amy McPherson. We can think of Catherine Coleman. We can think of Joyce Meyer. We can think of Joy Barth and Mary Causer. Who? Let me tell you about Joy Barth. I'll try and get the facts right. Joy Barth, a phenomenal woman of God. She was a missionary in Rhodesia. And in 1978, her and one other missionary were back. From, she was a nurse and they were back from furlough. 
uh, on furlough. And during their furlough, the rest of the missionaries, wives, children, everybody were massacred out there in 1978, November. Some of us would know about that. And the interesting thing about Joy is she went back. I think she showed tremendous courage. She went back. In 1991-92, she was in an operating theatre as such in the clinic in Zimbabwe. And blood splashed down her and entered into an open wound on her foot and she contracted AIDS. She died in 1995. Can I say to the men here, she died as a martyr, in my opinion. And yet we turn around and say, women should be quiet. Yet we haven't even got the courage to go where they go. Can I tell you about Mary Causa? Mary is currently, I went to Bible college with Mary, she's quite a character. I went to college with Mary and uh, she's serving in Salford. She's always been in Salford, that's where she is. And she started, she saw a need and she was invited to go in as a female chaplain into the men's prison in Manchester. I know men who wouldn't do this. She started going in quietly and became a chaplain in the prison. This was at a time when Elim as a movement were not recognized by the government as having chaplains. This is quite interesting. She was doing something that no woman had ever done before. And to be honest, not many men had done either. So she started going in there and then what, and she wouldn't tell you this, she's too humble, so I'll tell you. She was then uh, approached by Elim, what, what are you doing? She said, well, this is how I'm doing it. Do you know today a chaplaincy department has been set up in Elim, which Mary is deeply involved in, and we have over 50 chaplains throughout the country working in prisons, the Air Force, police forces, and all over the place, some of them even with Tesco's and Asda, all because one woman stood up and said, God has called me to do something. How do we judge the call of God on someone's life? By their character, by their Christian growth, by their anointing, by what God has told them to do, and also by their attitude. They don't grasp at it. Some of our greatest heroes are heroines. I'll say that again. Some of our greatest heroes are heroines. Now, men, I don't want to upset you with all this because you might go away feeling uncomfortable. You might say, well, if leadership was only male and, and preaching was only male, then actually our church would be full of men. But that's actually a lie. For the last hundred years, our churches have been predominantly in the UK led by men and predominantly attended by women. Gentlemen, we have created a female-friendly gospel. I will try and address that over the years here because actually I'm a man. I enjoy the message that says, follow me, obey me, here's my commands. I love the song we sang, I love your presence. I hadn't sung that before, so I don't know the tune. I love your presence, love you. I love that. And then we got to, I love you, Jesus. And I was like, because <laughs> as a man, I'm thinking, oh, that's strange. No, I do love Jesus. But to sing a love song to a, to a male figure, that's quite interesting. Any other men find that interesting? Some of you are going, is my wife looking? We understand that we have heroes of faith. We understand that anointing carries more weight than anything else. But can I just say this and just wrapping this up? There's a picture of George Jeffries and his early evangelistic band. You may not be able to see that, but there's women up there as well. Our movement was started with both men and women. I am the kind of preacher that will say a woman can preach. Now, Elim's stance on this is that leadership is ultimately male. Our national leadership team is made up of men. Women are not permitted to stand for that office. That may or may not change. I don't know. I'm not going to guess the future. I can only tell you what's happening now. In this church, leadership is ultimately male because you have a male senior pastor. But I would lovingly say to you this, and this is a word of gentle correction. When Pastor Penny preaches, and I use the word pastor because Elim recognizes her as a pastor, okay, when Pastor Barbie preaches, and I use that word advisedly because Elam recognized Barbie as a pastor. When Pat Kennett teaches, who is recognized locally as a Bible teacher here, and I have to say a very good Bible teacher. Or we have guest women that preach. If you decide to stay away, shame on you. For if somebody preaches on this platform, they do so with my blessing and under my authority and with my full permission. Can we stop relegating women to the kitchen. There is a gender role. There is a gender role. But can we not say that preaching is one of them? For they are probably, many women here, more educated than I am. And as long as they carry the anointing and the character of God, then they have every right to stand up and bring teaching. 
But anyone that comes to wants to usurp and dominate a service, be they male or female, I give you warning, you will not get opportunity from this platform. Okay, is that fair enough? Now I've upset you all. I didn't tell many jokes, didn't talk about darts or anything today. Shall we worship the Lord? Shall we welcome Caroline and her team back? Caroline and the team back to the platform. Let's worship him. Let's go out of here with singing and rejoicing. You might want to look over that message on the internet. They're gradually being put on YouTube. You'll be able to get the audio this week, and I'll publish my notes on Facebook in the next 24 hours or so. So if you're on Facebook, you'll be able to read it and do further study. If you have other, any other questions about that, I was going to say, please ask my wife, but don't. Please feel free, but that's our stance as a church. We believe that God can use men and women.